Before I begin my homily, I'd like to just take to a moment to say a quiet prayer with all of you for former President Trump and the victims from the shooting, and please pray for our nation. May God bless America. So we've been following this series, Get Used to Different. And I think when I say get used to different, it's because we as Catholics sometimes, we've gotten into that kind of rut, if you will. We've kind of gotten into doing things a certain way, and we might be falling short of the full mission of what we're supposed to be doing. You know, it was interesting. I was listening to a podcast some weeks ago, and it was Scott Hahn. He was having a conversation with someone about the difference between like the way Protestants approach things and the way Catholics approach things. And he made an interesting comment. He said, like, when the big divorce happened, it was almost like the Protestants got the Bible and the missionary activity and the Catholics got the sacraments. Like, you know, like when someone goes to leave the Catholic faith, says, but we have the Eucharist, we, we, we have the sacraments. You know, like, we, that, that's what we have. And that's true. But somehow in all of that, we stop listening really or paying attention closely to the word of God. And certainly our missionary endeavors have kind of faded away. And, and don't get me wrong, because you know as well as I do that the church has sent missionaries out around the world. People who are missionaries who have gone to Asia and to Africa and to South America and have converted many, many peoples. That activity might be out there. But I'm talking about the missionary activity of the average Catholic. The average Catholic, the person that sits in the pew week after week, sometimes day after day, has lost some of that missionary zeal that we ought to have. And I think part of it is because, you know, language can be a barrier sometimes. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever had to deal with translating. You know, like there, you have to translate something from one language into English or vice versa. And when you're dealing with that, sometimes you come across certain things that are just hard to translate might be an expression that's used that everybody understands or, or something like that. I think that happened with those who were translating the Missal into English, from the Latin to the English. And there are a couple of parts, if you know anything with the Latin, there are a couple of parts that were kind of a struggle. But the one that I find interesting, at the end of Mass, in the Latin Missal, there is only one dismissal that the priest would use. And it's still that way today, even though we have several in the English, there's only one in the Latin. And the words were, ite misa est. All you Latin experts out there? Ite misa est. Go, the dismissal is. Kind of that's the literal translation of it. It doesn't make any sense to us. So, of course, what have they tried to do? They try to say, well, what's the spirit of what we're looking at here? Now, take this word misa. It's where we get the word mass. It's where we get missile, missilet, misa. Misa can have several different meanings. It can have that missionary aspect of it. So go, the, you are the missionary. Go and mission. Continue the mass. So go, the mass is still going. Go out and do it. Somehow it came to be like what we say sometimes, the mass is ended. It wasn't meant to come across that way. What we're supposed to be saying to you at the end of Mass is, go, you are the missionary. Go and, you know, be, do, continue the mission, continue the Mass outside these walls. And somehow we've lost that sense somewhere along the lines. The word Misa could even be taken to be, uh, to translate into the word sent. You are sent to go forth. Today, Jesus sends out his disciples. You know, we, we sometimes think that, you know, like Jesus didn't have much of a mission. No, he had a specific mission and he gave it today to the disciples. And he said to his, his 12, he said, listen, I'm going to send you out and you to preach repentance, cast out demons, cure the sick. And the same is true for you. See, we wouldn't have to wait for Jesus' death and resurrection to, to see what's in his mind. He empowers them and he sends them forth. And he does the same for you. Now, I know you're sitting there right now going, all right, you know, they were right there with Jesus. Jesus granted them the authority. Jesus granted them the power, you know, but me, I'm just me. You know, I, I, what power do I have? Don't forget what we got in the divorce, the sacraments. We got the sacraments. The sacraments that give us grace. St. Paul is talking about this grace. The Holy Spirit that has been given to us, Jesus Christ 
sent the Holy Spirit upon us. First in the sacraments, baptism in the Eucharist, we, we, we receive grace from them, we are changed by them. But whatever happened to the sacrament of confirmation? You know, the, the sacrament of mission, if you will, it, it's the way it was supposed to be at least. Yeah, you know, and, and so much has changed, like the way sometimes you go to a, a confirmation service and you would sometimes think even the bishops have lost the understanding of what the sacrament is about. I'll listen to them sometimes and they'll, it's almost like, you know, well, this is the sacrament that's going to make you a nice person now. <laughs> like, hold on a second. Like, you know, if little Johnny's sitting off by himself and, and everybody's being mean to little Johnny, you should go over and sit with little Johnny because, you know, you're, you're confirmed now. And, and that's what, you know, we Christians do. And I'm like, no, do that before you're confirmed. Be a nice person before you receive the Holy Spirit. You can do that without confirmation. The confirmation ceremony was always a mission ceremony. It had a mission to it. And in fact, what we even used to say is it was like you're getting your military credentials to go out and fight for Christ. That's what used to be in the, in the old catechism. Go out with these military credentials to fight for Christ. And the, the old right, anybody who remembers the old right, you got a little slap on the cheek. I, I, you know, we should bring back the slap once. No, we shouldn't be hitting people. But you know what I'm saying? That, that, that was a symbolic gesture, just a light tap on the cheek, a symbolic gesture to remind you that you were going out to fight and you will meet resistance. There will be people who will fight back who will push back, who will not accept your message, who will not want to hear what you have to say. That was a reminder. That was the confirmation ceremony. You've all received that same empowerment from Jesus Christ to be missionaries, to go out and to share the good news, to call people to repentance and change, starting with ourselves. If you've ever had that conversation with someone about faith, especially like, say, a family member, you know, a child, a parent, a spouse, a relative, if you've ever had those conversations, I'm sure you've noticed it probably gets a little heated, gets a little like pushback and everything. We need to be witnessing to Jesus Christ and how we witness, that's important. We need to be sharing the Holy Spirit that we've received. We need to be going out and taking the gifts that we've received and use them for increasing the, the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Yet so many of us seem to, to have, like what Dr. Scott Hahn was saying, you know, we've got the sacraments, we're good. No, we've always been a missionary people. We've always been one to take the message forth. And let's face it, we need to hear this message in Kings Park. I'm not going to send you to Africa. I'm not going to send you to Asia. I'm going to send you to Kings Park, to Smithtown, to, to the surrounding areas here. Start with our own. We don't have to go very far. And I give you the same authority that Jesus Christ gave to his, his apostles. Go and cast the demons out, please. Go out there and tell the demons, get out of our town, get out of our house, get out of our, our neighborhoods, get out. Invoke St. Michael and, and get those demons out of here. They went out and they cast out demons and bring healing to others. You may not have to you know, do much, but bring the healing to others. Jesus lays his hands, he holds his hands over in prayer. The bishop holds his hands over in confirmandi and invokes the Holy Spirit. I'll hold my hands out and invoke the Holy Spirit on the bread and wine to become the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. That power that is communicated in that way, you can now communicate to others in your way, out on mission. Now, some people will say to me, oh, come on, me? Me? You're asking me to do that? I, I'm, I'm not that smart. I, I don't have that, you know, that, that eloquence. I don't have that ability. Let's get something straight. God picked a fisherman. He had a tax collector. He had zealots. He didn't have other rabbis or those who were like well steeped in Jewish literature or anything like that. He had ordinary people. I mean, even the prophet Amos says, hey, listen, I'm a farmer. I, you know, I, I'm a peasant. I'm, I was a nobody. I don't want to, I didn't want to do this. And yet that nobody went and delivered God's prophetic message to the people. So if you think you can't do it, well, you can. Don't, don't be so quick to dismiss yourself. It doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be fancy words. It doesn't have to be all the eloquence and all of that. Just be for Jesus Christ, sharing your faith. There's a very good 10-part series that you can find on Formed by Dr. Mary Healy called Evangelization. If you want to know a little bit more about the missionary activity of the church in the early church, she's a wonderful resource. Dr. Mary Healy is one of the, the really good ones that 
can say things so clearly, take deep concepts and make them accessible. Get on formed and look it up. It's called evangelization, beautiful 10 part series. We sitting here have a responsibility. We sitting here have been called by Jesus Christ, have been called by God to go forth and share the good news, to call people to repentance, to cast out demons, to heal the brokenhearted, to help those who are burdened. Even though we ourselves sometimes carry that burden, we have to go out and do it. And that's why Jesus kind of gives that image, just leave the burden behind. Don't carry all sorts of stuff with you. Don't go overly prepared. Don't bring all of this other stuff. Just go. Just go and do the mission. Ite misa est. Let it continue. Let the mission go on. Things have to be different, and we've got to start getting used to what that difference is going to look like. We have been tasked by this. We have been challenged by this. And I now challenge you. I now say to you, I send you out to share the good news, to call people to, to Jesus Christ. I send you out at the end of this liturgy, I will send you out to be the missionaries to the local neighborhoods, to be the missionaries to your own families, to be the missionaries in this world today. My dear brothers and sisters, go out, share the good news. And then next week when you come back, guess what's gonna happen? The apostles are gonna come back next week too. And they're gonna share all the great stories of the wonderful things that happened through their preaching all the wonderful things that they saw, all the wonderful things that they did. So I'm going to send you out this week, and when we come back next week, tell me all the stories. Tell me what happened. Tell me how it went. Share the good news. You know, I saw the demons run screaming from my neighborhood. I, I had my neighbors all of a sudden. It can happen. Don't giggle. It can really happen. That's what we're being sent to do. Go forth and do it. Go forth and share the good news. And when we come back, let's hear about it. Let's, let's support one another. Let's be there for one another. But the thing in next week's gospel that is tough for me is Jesus is going to look at the people and say, but they're like sheep without a shepherd. And that cuts to me because my title is pastor. And I hope you don't feel like sheep without a shepherd. I will shepherd you. I will lead you. And I will send you forth. That's my role. So go forth. Share the good news. Ite misa est. God bless you.